download and extract the files. Find the content folder of your project and place the PSXFX folder in it. Or you can use the project that came with the asset pack. In this case, I'll start from scratch. If you don't see the assets in the content browser, make sure you're using a compatible engine version. In this video, I'm using Unreal Engine 425. I will quickly build a level with some basic shapes, just so I have something to work with. I am also going to remove the baked lighting. If you don't see the world settings pane, then click on window and world settings. Now that the level is pitch black, I want to add some lights. But as you can see, the light isn't working. To fix this, you must place a light manager in the level. Once that's done, you can see green debug boxes, which indicate that the light is working, but it's still dark. That's because I haven't yet applied the correct material to these meshes. Find the Mesh Master material and use it to create the material instance. To keep the project organized, I'll create a new folder for materials. Open the material instance and change the texture to something more appropriate. With one mesh selected in the level, press Ctrl Shift A to select all meshes and assign the new material instance. Now we can actually see the light working. Hold Alt and drag to duplicate lights. As long as no more than four lights overlap the same components, you won't have any issues. If more than four lights overlap the same components, then the extra lights will not work. You can delete lights the same way you would any other actor in the world. Select the light and press delete on your keyboard. At this point you'll be greeted with a warning message, letting you know that this will break references for the light manager. Simply click yes. Even though the blueprint has been deleted, the light is still visible. There are several ways you can clean up this mess. One way is by moving another light in the level. Another way is by calling the fix all lights function on the light blueprint or the light manager. Let's say you don't have the light manager in the level anymore and you want to get rid of the ghost lights. Select the mesh in the level and press Ctrl Shift A. In the details pane search for custom primitive data even though the array appears to be empty it does hold the data we need to get rid of click on the little trash can to delete the data if you're using level streaming you need to have a light manager in each sub level that has a light blueprint in it next let's have a quick look at the ambience blueprint which controls the global light source fog and dithering you can change the direction of the light by rotating the blueprint. This won't have any effect if the vertex normal influence is set to zero. Let's say you have some indoor areas which should be unaffected by the global light. In this case, unchecked, affected by global light. I won't explain in detail how to use the light shaft blueprint. You need to play with it yourself. You can use the scale, move and rotate tools to shape it. Now let's have a look at the destructibles. I've changed the game mode to BP demo game mode, just so I have a character to control and the ability to apply damage. I've also modified the demo character to not run any logic on begin play as that will affect how the environment looks. This barrel comes with the asset pack, but let's say you want to create your own destructible. You can either duplicate an existing data asset from the demo content folder, or make a new one by right-clicking in the content browser, then highlighting miscellaneous and data asset. Search for destructible data and select it. Now we need a mesh to use. I'll copy the sphere that comes with the editor because it will serve as a good example.
We need to find the disruptable master material and use it to create the material instance. Apply it to the sphere mesh. It's important that you apply the material in the static mesh editor and not the instance in the world. If you don't see the details pane, then click on Window and Details. Lastly, we need to configure the data asset which holds all the information about this destructible and its behavior. Let's see it in action. That didn't really look like an explosion. Destructible meshes mustn't have smoothing groups. Luckily, there is a quick and easy way how to fix this issue, and you don't even need to leave the editor, but you do need to enable the Modeling Tools plugin if you haven't already. Once that's done, click on the Modeling Tools, then UVs and Normals. Set the Split Normals method to Face Normal Threshold and set the threshold to zero. This removes smoothing groups, which is exactly what we need. If you want to add, remove, or modify variables that are used by the data asset, you can do so in the destructible data blueprint. What this new variable does is up to you. I will modify the ground material to support vertex painting. You can blend up to three different textures. Alpha channel is reserved for light or shade painting. For this example, I'll only enable the red channel. The preview sphere turns completely green, and that's because these meshes have a value of one in each color channel. You can fill these meshes with black color, but this will only affect the instances in the world, which means if you drag the same mesh from the content browser in the level, it will look green again. To modify the default vertex color of the source file, click the button next to the paint bucket. This will permanently modify the default vertex color of the source mesh and instances in the world, so you need to be careful when doing this, as you will lose any paint you've applied previously. If your mesh paint tool looks slightly different than mine, then it's probably because I'm using the legacy mesh paint mode, which you can toggle in the editor preferences. You can use the graphics widget from the demo to tweak settings. Create an editor utility widget with the graphics widget in it. Some settings won't work in the editor. I'll make one more utility widget with a button in it. When you click on the button, it will fix the lighting. This way, you don't need to look for a light blueprint or light manager in the level. It can be a pain to look for these blueprints in the level, so I will add another button which when clicked will select the ambience blueprint for me.
Now you can adjust the settings quickly. If you have a question, leave a comment or join the Discord server.